Hey guys, welcome back. Holy, I'm not going to swear for the YouTube algorithm, but oh my god. The Silent Shadow are confirmed to be in Halo Infinite. And not only are they going to be in Halo Infinite, one of their first bleeds is apparently going to be a major character. Grim just released a massive cannon fodder diving into the Silent Shadow, this specific first bleed, and also giving us a bigger look at Mark 7 Gen 3 armor in Halo Infinite, diving into all the lore, and oh my god, let's just look at it. Let's just look at it. So, this new Silent Shadow character, this elite, goes by the name of either Jaeger or Jaeger Udomni. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna call him Jaeger instead of Jaeger because Jaeger, Frank Jaeger from Metal Gear Solid. I'm getting Frank Jaeger vibes from this, kind of, if any of you guys get that reference. But let's read his lore because, my god, it is cool. High Value Headhunter. In hushed whispers throughout the ranks of the Banished, Jaeger Udomni's name is spoken of with care. The Blade Master's history is shrouded in rumor and half-truths. Some say he was an experiment, an affront to his own kind. Others make mention of a clandestine ambush gone wrong. Very few know the truth, fewer still speak of it. One thing is certain, he has hunted demons before, and as the first recruit welcomed into the Hand of Atriarchs, he will do so again. The Hand of Atriox, Jaeger Udomni, a Blade Master of the Hand of Atriox. I have no idea what that is, but my god, it sounds dope. It sounds so cool. Actually, maybe we do know who the Hand of Atriox are, so shout out to the Eld for mentioning this on Twitter. Um, this did not come back to me until I read your tweet, so props, dude. Um, in Hunting Party, that short story that confirmed that the Silent Shadow joined the Banished, um, basically Atriox forced a group of blade masters to kill their first bleed and join the banished so maybe that's who jaeger is maybe jaeger is one of the elite one of the elites if not the elite who stabbed racer azavale in the back and joined the banished with his squad just uh, some food for thought but maybe you never know now as you can see visually this is not any normal looking elite, rather he's not even a normal looking Silent Shadow member. His armor is a lot grayer as opposed to the sort of bright red that it usually is. Uh, and as you can see, he's quite cybernetic in his design. And like they, like they said in the description, some believe him to be an experiment, an affront to his own kind. I'm getting kind of Artas Madum vibes here with the sort of cybernetic mandibles. The guy has a cybernetic arm as well, dude. Like, look at that. The blade arm is like a robot arm. The gray on the red with the red energy sword. It, oh my god. I know it's like peak edgy teen black and red colors with spikes and stuff, but I'm sorry. I just love it. This design looks absolutely fantastic. Jaeger, my dude. I cannot wait to see you in game. I really hope you get a better shakedown than Let Valir got in Halo Wars 2. I really hope Jaeger becomes like an actual fleshed out proper character in Infinite and becomes somebody that we love to fight and we love to want to kill. Because look, I mean, look at his design, dude. You've got what appears to be the hand of Atriox marking on his breastplate. The black and red contrast, the, oh my god, dude, it looks so good. And actually, another really cool detail is if you zoom into his robotic arm, his cybernetic arm, it looks to me like it's a very similar design to the UNSC robotic arms for Spartans, like the one that Cat has and the one that you could get in Reach. Now, we know for a fact that the Banished love to repurpose UNSC tech and specifically armor. I mean, Atriox had a ODST breastplate on his stomach. The brutes in the gameplay reveal were using bulldog shotguns. Is this a case of maybe one of Jaeger's victims having their, their cybernetic arms cut off and put on Jaeger? Oh, dude. Oh my god, there's so much potential with this guy. I'm so excited. Grim then goes on to say that he is a mysterious and battle-ravaged Sangheili warrior. Jaeger represents one of several new characters that you will encounter along your way through the Halo Infinite campaign, with each confrontation playing its own part in Chief's continuing journey. While today's introduction is just a glimpse, we hope it leaves you eager to learn more. Dude, Jeff, Need need I need I answer that? Need I say anything else? I think we're all eager. Please give us more. There's only so much I can really say about this guy, but I mean, his design is 
fantastic. The cybernetic arm, dude. Like, the lore as well. The fact that he's considered to be something of an experiment, but no one really knows the true origin of this legendary Blade Master. Some say he was, like, an experiment gone wrong. Others say that it was an ambush gone wrong or something. There's so much mystery surrounding this character. And you couple that with the design. Oh, my God. I... I'm so excited for this game, dude. I can't wait. This confirmation... Oh my god, I'm so happy, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy we're actually getting the Silent Shadow in the game. Okay, pulling myself away from the Silent Shadow for just a minute. Uh, Grim also gave us a look at the new Spartan Mjolnir Gen 3 Mark 7 armor that is going to be the baseline of all the armor in Halo Infinite. Gave us some lore and some backstory and an official description of what appears to be the default version of Mark 7 in Infinite. And it goes as follows. With a new art direction in Halo Infinite that draws on elements of both classic and modern, it gave us an opportunity to move the Mjolnir platform ahead once more, ushering in the Gen 3 era of powered assault armor. Something first hinted at back in the official Spartan Field Manual, which we actually covered quite a while ago. So yeah, the seeds were there like two years ago. Leading the way for this new generation is the Mark 7, the result of years of covert component testing and parallel systems development. Originally field tested by Spartan Naomi 010, Naomi, one of the only good elements of Kilo 5, still getting referenced, you love to hear it, the Gen 1 Mark 7 suite of components, which is what Naomi wore, would be refined time and time again, with further elements tested on board the Gen 2 Decimator class Mjolnir variant. Now, just to offshoot real quick, the Decimator in Halo 5, the Decimator armor, was described as the closest relation or something along those lines to Mark 7, so it's no surprise that Decimator was essentially a way to field test certain things that would later go into Mark 7. Eventually, these efforts would dovetail with parallel projects within Materials Group, culminating in the Gen 3 Mark 7, designed to outfit the latest Spartan contingents with the very best in cutting-edge warfighting technology. Though it does represent a generational leap for the Mjolnir platform for actively deployed Spartans, some elements tested within the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Mark 7 remain in the prototype stage due to unreliability or cost factors, such as integration of foreigner-derived nanomachine elements and full shield shaping. Now, I can't help but think that the fact that nanomachines are still in a prototype stage is some sort of tongue-in-cheek reference to how everybody hates the nanomachines explanation for Chief's armor changing in Halo 4 from Halo 3. It's got to be a tongue-in-cheek reference, it has to be. And then we got the actual in-game lore behind this specific set of Spartan armor, which looks to me to be the default set of armor in Halo Infinite, the default Mark 7. And it goes as follows. Created with input from Dr. Halsey herself, the latest Mark 7 iteration refreshes the Mjolnir technical architecture with breakthroughs in neural interfaces, shield emitters, fusion power, and armor formulation. The Mark 7 designation refers to a number of prototype platforms that test the ever-evolving Mjolnir Generation 3 standard. The most recent design to bear the name was selected by Dr. Halsey for Material Group's Keystone Development Program. And here is that armor that we've seen so much recently in action figures and stuff. There it is, in all of its glory, drawn, by the way, by concept artist Isaac Hannaford, who, if you don't know, has been working with Halo since, I believe, Halo 2. The guy is one of the best concept artists out there. I am an insanely big fan of his work. His art, to me, defines Halo, and it's great to see him back with Halo Infinite. I mean, look at this. It's beautiful, dude. I cannot wait to rock this. And there you have it, the new lore behind Gen 3 Mark 7. And the silent shadow in Halo Infinite. I still, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna get tired of saying that. I cannot believe they're actually in the game, dude. I'm gonna stop overhyping because I'm extending this video way more than it needs to be, but man. Oh, I'm so excited for that. We're actually gonna be fighting the silent shadow in a game. <sighs> Victory. <laughs> One last thing. Um,. If you didn't know, Shadows of Reach, the prequel book to Halo Infinite, or what appears to be a prequel book with Blue Team going back to Reach just before Halo Infinite, has been delayed till October 20th. However, Grimm confirmed that if you pre-order the book from Walmart, 
I don't know how this applies to other countries, but if you get it from Walmart, then uh, they'll be stocking a limited edition of the book that comes with an additional short story entitled Sacrifice. He would tell us more, but you know, spoilers. So yeah, curious to see what Sacrifice is about, but if you pre-ordered from Amazon or from any other store, I would consider getting the book from Walmart now instead if you can. Like I said, I don't know how this is going to apply to people in the UK and Europe and Australia and Asia. We'll have to wait and see, I guess, but we should get it over here. Either way, this is also dope. The Silent Shadow and Infinite. I'm going to go now because <laughs> I can sit here and just repeat those words. The Silent Shadow or an Infinite for like 10 hours, but... You guys don't want to hear that. <laughs> right. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to cut this one short here. Um, I'm so excited, dude. Right. I'm going to end the video. I can't end videos. I'm so bad at ending videos, especially when I'm hyped. Thank you for watching. I love you all. And I'll catch you all in the next one, baby.